So hello. Um, we're today talking about uh, doing conference websites uh, with Drupal COD. It is a uh, distribution of Drupal, so um, all the fun modules um, with uh, within its own distribution. And specifically, we're going to go over uh, Linux Fest Northwest, which is a regional conference. Um, we'll talk about that in a moment. So first of all, um, I'm Jacob Perry. Um, I'm the Drupal 7 COD maintainer and a organizer for Linux Fest. I'm Emily Nouveau. I'm also an organizer for Linux Fest, and the work I've done around COD is mainly in theming and scheduling. I'm Jason Yee. I wrote the ticket module, which COD leverages to do all of the ticketing and registration, so I also built the integration uh, from ticket to COD. And you'll notice that picture makes sense at the end. <laughs> so, uh, or actually in the next slide. So, uh, what is uh, what is Linux Fest Northwest? Um, so, Linux Fest Northwest is basically an annual uh, conference that has uh, a little less than uh, people here. Uh, we have about fifteen hundred people um, that's at um, uh, that come. It's a free uh, conference, so um, anyone can come and attend. Uh, we have about forty sponsors and about 80 sessions that are over two days in about 10 rooms. So it's, it's a somewhat complex uh, schedule, um, and it's all volunteer-ran. We, uh, we don't pay. Uh, we, have, we have a budget that's extremely uh, small, which is awesome, and uh, it's all volunteer-ran by uh, not only us, but we have about 100 students from Bellingham Technical College who do it as part of their IT degree, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so with that, we have a whole bunch of uh, needs. Um, we have registration that happens online before the fest, but we also need to be able to take that information and uh, do it on site. Uh, we have these pre-scheduled uh, curated sessions, uh, very similar to DrupalCon. Uh, we have uh, birds of a feather sessions, so where you talk about um, things on a ad hoc basis. Uh, we have a schedule. Uh, we don't print anything out uh, besides our badges. Uh, we have these e-signage that are like 50-inch screens, uh, and we need to support that and uh, the desktop as well as mobile. And then we have our sponsors um, that will need to sign up and somehow display that data in an efficient way so that we don't have to duplicate uh, work. So then some more technology side, we have a whole bunch of uh, open source uh, contributors who want to write uh, third-party apps, so uh, mobile apps um, to do uh, you know, their own fun things with our data. Um, we have uh, session workflows that we need to work on, so we need to figure out if sessions should be published or unpublished. A few years ago, we used to just let people submit things and no, we don't do that. Um, we have uh, personalized schedules, um, so uh, you can actually add things to your schedule, very similar to, to DrupalCon. Um, and then we have uh, part of that workflow. We can have a two-month call for papers, and we can assign multiple speakers. And it's not very much like DrupalCon, because COD also runs DrupalCon. Um, so why, why COD? Um, back in 2009, we were using this uh, Java framework called DXP. Uh, probably no one's heard of it because uh, it only has one uh, contributor to it uh, who was in our uh, organizing committee. It was open source, but the problem was we didn't have uh, community. It wasn't community driven. And so we needed to find something that had the support um, of the community and, and we could uh, really uh, move forward with all the things we needed. So that's what uh, COD's about. And we'll start with uh, the ticket module uh, and Jason. Yeah, so as Jacob said, um, community driven is pretty big with COD. Um, and so I actually haven't been involved with Linux Fest Northwest, but Jacob um, came to me and we were talking about things, and so I decided to jump in on this. Um, when we were talking about ticketing, we tried to figure out what the best user experience would be, and we settled upon Eventbrite, which if you're familiar with that service, it's an online service that provides ticketing and registration for a variety of events as um, software as a service. So we took a look at how their workflow um, happened and the checkout process, and we decided that we would replicate that. So the key points that it provides are the ability to have multiple tickets um, or ticket types per event. So you, in that way, you can have a, a paid ticket and a premium ticket and a free ticket and as many as you uh, can imagine. And each of those ticket types should support different prices, different availabilities based on time or based on quantity and collect different information when somebody checks out and purchases those tickets. So with the checkout, we did integration into Drupal Commerce. And for all of the reporting, we use views, so it's really easy to customize those. 
This screen, which is probably fairly small to you, um, shows what it looks like if you edit an event. Um, you're allowed to create a ticket type. It's simply a field, just like any other field in Drupal or a collection of fields. So the subfields that it provides are the name of the ticket that's displayed to the, to the end user and a description. Uh, for the back end, it provides a date interface so you can say when a ticket is available and when it becomes unavailable. It also provides fields for, for you to set the, the quantity, so the actual total stock that's available to your users, and to limit them to order certain numbers of tickets, um, both a minimum and a maximum. And then it provides integration to commerce, as I mentioned. When you create a product in commerce, you're allowed to associate that to the ticket type here, so when a user purchases a ticket, it will add that product to their cart, and then they can go check out. After you create the event and you have some ticket types, um, the top screenshot here shows what it looks like to go into the ticket tab of your event. So here it's listing two ticket types. It shows the number of registrations per ticket type and it shows whether they are currently available. So if you had a ticket type that was time-based um, and available for next week, let's say, that would display as not available and that would be updated. The links following it uh, include the ability to view registrations and then to manage the fields. So all of the ticket types are entities. So just like any other entity in Drupal, you can see on the lower screenshot that you can adjust the fields. So in this way, you can customize each individual ticket type to collect the information that you want. This is what it looks like to view the tickets that are for a ticket type. Um, so here, the example, we see that Jacob has registered twice. Both of his registrations for tickets are pending. We can use the operations links to view those registrations or to edit them or to cancel them. And then since we have integration with Drupal Commerce in COD, there's a link to the order. So it takes you to Drupal Commerce's order uh, UI. Once you have modified and uh, the fields for a ticket type. Um, you could see with that last screen, it only provided you basic information. You may want to modify that. So one of the nice things that we've done is with views, we've got a ticket registration display handler. So uh, the first screenshot shows that. Um, just like you would add a page or a block from a view, you can select a ticket registration. When you do that, the views interface will then ask you which ticket type you would like. So you could create a custom view that would show some amount of information and say that when you click the administrative page for a specific ticket type, it would use that view that you just created. On the front end, like I said, we pattern things after Eventbrite, and that makes the flow really simple for, the, for your end user. So from the event page, they would simply select the quantity of tickets and the type of tickets that they want to purchase. Um, that takes them to the registration page here, which gives them the options um, to fill out the information for each of those ticket types. Um, and it also gives them, up at the top, the fields to set the person information for the person who's registering. So in this way, you could have someone register for other users, and it would be able to associate not only the tickets for the person who's supposed to be using it and actually attending your event, but the person who registered for them could go back in and make modifications. So obviously with integration into commerce and this flow, it's fairly complex in the code. Um, so we had a few issues um, with the integration, uh, mostly with if someone had bought a ticket and then went through the checkout process and decided to stop halfway, those tickets at one point were being lost um, and they would go missing. That those issues have been fixed, but we do have some a ways to go on the um, the user interface, particularly around user feedback. Um, so we'd love your help if you uh, if you do use COD to give that a try and provide feedback on ways that that can be improved. Session submission is the other big area where we have users submitting information um, and interacting with the site. So with Sessions and Linux Fest Northwest, we wanted to be able to allow users who had registered on the site and had a user account but who had not yet purchased tickets, um, we wanted to allow those people to submit sessions. 
if you're all familiar with Drupal, that's really easy. Um, that's just stock Drupal permissioning, which is great. Uh, so sessions are just standard nodes, so we could take advantage of that. Along with being standard nodes, there's the standard fields for things like uploading your slides or having images. We also set it up so that you could have multiple speakers. So a panel like we have today with three speakers up here is easily managed with COD. And then we have a flag to mark speaker confirmation. So when someone submits a session, you can follow up and flag that they are actually uh, have confirmed that they are able to present. The workflow for sessions is fairly standard with Drupal. There are two feedback mechanisms that are built into COD. Uh, the first is five star. So with Linux Fest Northwest, the programming and uh, the session committee decides which sessions are actually going to be selected. Um, so that's more of an administrative back end. Um, so five star is in place for that so that people who are within the conference planning committee can rate sessions and determine which ones they'd like to select. On the front end, we have flag, uh, and flag simply is there for people to say whether they like a session or don't like a session. And this is there to provide feedback for resource planning. So you could see how many of your potential attendees are interested in a particular session, and you can budget your rooms. If you have a large room versus a small room, you can plan accordingly. So I'm going to talk about scheduling. Um, we obviously use the schedule everywhere from our e-signage to our print schedule to allowing people to sign up for BOFs. So Linux Fest had some scheduling needs that um, a lot of conference software didn't quite meet, like the ability to schedule a session across multiple rooms and multiple times. So this is really helpful if you have, say, one room that or one session that needs to go from one time slot into the next one. So um, you might have other sessions running alongside and you want this one to continue for an extra time. This is also helpful if you have, say, a session on Saturday that's really popular and now you'd like to give people the opportunity to attend it on Sunday without, say, creating a new session that's just a copy of what you've got. We also needed the ability to constrain when and where certain schedule items might occur. So the ability to say uh, a BOF will occur in this room at this time and uh, give people the option to create BOFs through that sort of schedule. We wanted to provide an intuitive UI for admins to create a schedule. So a lot of our admins aren't necessarily technical people, um, and we wanted this to be really intuitive for them to use. Then we wanted to display the schedule in multiple formats, like the e-signage and the website display. To do this, we created this concept of rooms and times, and uh, time slots, which tie the two together. So rooms are a pretty basic entity. Um, mostly they consist of just a title. And you can add things like capacity for rooms, so you know how many people attend to help organizers and how many people can fit into there. And then uh, times are just a start time and an end time. The really awesome thing about this grid is that these time slots designate when the rooms and times go together. So you no longer have these loosely coupled concepts. So it allows you to say these boffs can appear in, um, in these rooms at these times, but then later in the day, you might have a session occurring in that room, but you didn't need that room for sessions. So you don't have to, say, mark a room as being just a boff room, for example. So after you've built out your whole grid, then you have the schedule display. It was really important for us to be able to have this responsive schedule so users can maybe look on their desktop and set up their schedule and then they come in and they're walking through the fest and they have the schedule available where they can just see it on their phone and see what they're going to next in a really clear, concise way. So we had some scheduling issues. Um, there were different permissions and access problems, like um, not allowing the session organizers who have a certain role to be able to see the ability um, to mark a note as a session as accepted. 
as opposed to just the original unprocessed date, those are all fixed. Um, <laughs> sort of a minor bug. Um, one of the things that we'd like to fix is the user interface um, for this grid. So one of the things that we have a patch in the queue for is, um, is that? Okay. Um, so you should see the video playing um, of a drag and drop scheduler where people can just take an unprocessed session and just drag it into a certain time. And this should make it really easy for admins to actually create their schedule without needing to go into sessions and identify what time slot things occur in. So that's in the queue. And if people would like to come and sprint on that, and we'd like to get in in a cod soon. Then, of course, we have birds of a feather. So um, with that grid, that's where people can set up this template, which says when boffs can occur. And then in this image, you'll see this generates a view that shows a uh, time slot and a room. And the registered attendees can just click Create a Boff. And it works just like sessions, so they add a time. They might add some slides. And users can add that to their schedule through the same flag. And it will appear in the same row with sessions. So just like most conferences, Linux Fest has uh, sponsors. And our needs for sponsors were that sponsors can apply. And when they submit their application form online, it fires an email off to organizers. Then an organizer will email them back and be able to walk them through this whole process for um, maybe getting their description in in a way that will work for them, uh, might talk to them about other sponsorship levels that they might be interested in. So our sponsorship levels are taxonomy terms. This allows us to have different sponsor types from event to, um, to event, so you might have a platinum, gold, and bronze. Um, and then in another event, another system, you might have their completely on separate terms. Um, and then we use Drupal Commerce to allow the sponsors to buy these sponsorships after they've been walked through this application process, and then at the end they pay for these. Once the application's been submitted, all of that information is used everywhere throughout the site, so you might have a block that displays the sponsors and a gold sponsor in one block, different sponsors in another block, and then that description will appear on the sponsors page as well. Cool. So I'm going to talk a little bit about on-site check-in. Um, so with 1,500 people, uh, it is extremely expensive to print out badges and merge sort uh, your badges. As you can see here, uh, uh, Lisa Lang from FreeBSD Project, she... Um, that whole part is a barcode. That whole part is a label that we stick on uh, the badge. And so what we do with COD is allow for fast check-in where we are searching for someone's name and then hit the check-in button and then print it out. This allows us to get someone through check-in in about 15 to 25 seconds if they're already registered. Um, and then if you aren't registered, you can go through the same process through the ticket module and then it gets to the on-site check-in. Uh, which is a little longer, but uh, it's still faster than having to reprint badges and whatnot. Um, this provides uh, all of our admins with a view of all the users, um, and then it captures the time when they were checking in. So we can get metrics on when people checked in to say, okay, next year, maybe we should have a few more people at this time, and we can have less staff at another time. Um, and then we do PDF printing right from there. You can probably guess they're Linux, they're Linux desktops um, on a Zebra 2844 printer, so the industrial-style um, label printers. I mentioned a little bit earlier we talked about uh, web services. So specifically, there is an Android application that a volunteer was wanting to make. Um, so we've been working on making uh, JSON feeds as a part of um, all of the views that are in COD. Um, here are a few of them. So you have your schedule, um, sessions, et cetera. Uh, one of the other cool parts um, with the RESTful uh, process is having um, this barcode scanner, which will allow us to register people on our phones and uh, do it quickly. Um, we had an after party where we were scanning badges in because Washington State has some weird laws about things. And then um, what we did with that this year, we're thinking about doing barcode scanning instead of searching for people's names. So if you have your phone and you've already registered, we just scan your, your phone and you, it'll print it out. So figuring out ways to make it even uh, faster to get people registered. So uh, some 
more general timelines. Uh, a lot of people ask when, when COD's going to be fully released. Um, the beta's out now, um, and beta 4 is what we're uh, aiming for probably the end of this week. Um, we want to address, uh, there's a bunch of critical issues in the queue um, that people have uh, given feedback on that, that are worthy to get in before uh, the next beta. Um, we want to work on improving the administrative uh, user interface. Uh, for some of those who may have used, how many people have used Alpha COD before? Okay, so you probably know what that's like. Um, sort of night and day from, from what it used to be. Uh, that's because we spent about 250 hours between eight people uh, at uh, DrupalCon Austin and got it almost totally revamped, and it's, it's pretty awesome now. Um, working on completing this drag-and-drop scheduling system. Uh, it's probably the biggest request we've seen all the way since COD 6, and uh, I'm excited to, to get it up. And then uh, do a full permissions and security review. Uh, there are a lot of features. There are a lot of roles, and uh, we want to make sure that's all really well vetted before uh, we do a full release because that would um, mean we'd need a security release even for, for small things. So um, we're, we're aiming for the beginning of uh, next year to do a full 1.0, um, and uh, we're working on moving uh, DrupalCon sites um, in line with COD. Uh, they're, on a, they're on a certain branch that we're using right now. So um, all this uh, couldn't be done without uh, the help of a lot of volunteers. Uh, COD is a distribution that's not really uh, supported. Um, we don't have paid people do it. Uh, we do have uh, help from Acquia and uh, MongoDB and Stanford um, were organizations that um, sponsored some time to help uh, work on the project. But the, the vast majority of time is actually all volunteer-based. And uh, here are some of them. And actually yesterday we had another uh, five people show up at the, um, the sprint and, or at the community summit. And uh, we had two issues uh, fixed there. So um, thanks for those for coming out yesterday. That was pretty awesome. Um, so talking about that, there's ways to contribute. Um, we will have a BOF tomorrow that's a little, um, a little more um, in-depth uh, at 1045 and G110. So if you have questions or, or concerns, problems you've been having, uh, we can talk about them there. Uh, we'll have a sprint going on pretty much all week, but officially on Friday. Um, come out and uh, see what's happening. We can help you get it installed, and uh, uh, hopefully we can uh, fix some of those issues in the, the issue queue. Um, you can also contribute at uh, project slash COD support on Drupal.org. There's also the COD uh, module. Um, that is the install profile, but um, the COD support uh, project is the meat and potatoes, basically, of uh, all the features that you see in COD. Uh, and not to, not to leave Linux Fest out, uh, a little uh, spiel for Linux Fest. It's happening uh, April 25th, 26th, 2015. It's about 70 kilometers uh, south of Vancouver, BC, about 100 kilometers north of uh, Seattle, Washington. And uh, we have people from all over the world. It's a great place to take a vacation at the end of April. Um, it's sunny mm, about 60% of the time the last 15 years, so it's been, it's been pretty good. Uh, November, uh, just basically next month, we'll do the call for papers um, and, of course, sponsorships um, and then uh, registration starting the uh, early next year. So with that, uh, take some uh, questions and, uh, yeah. Any questions? Uh, okay, go for it. Uh, oh, so and, yeah, if we can get out of the microphone, cool. Hello. So my name is Roman. I'm from Lamberg, and we develop an uh, application for Amsterdam, uh, both for Android and iOS. And the problem is uh, like Amsterdam code uh, installation actually has only one feed, and that was uh, there just like last Friday, I suppose. You're talking about the DrupalCon, the DrupalCon feed, right? Yeah, DrupalCon yeah. feed, right, right. Um, so, do you have some plans to have more web services there for, like, not only for sessions, but, for example, for, uh, for speakers and other information that is publicly available any, uh, right. anywhere? And uh, uh, other thing, for example, I think it would be great to be able to connect your, like, code account with mobile app and see your own schedule on the mobile site as well. Um, I think we we uh, we can help you with that, yeah. But just uh, want to know if you have these plans. 
in your pipeline or not. So, uh, yeah, so real briefly, um, a while back, um, one of the issues with distributions in general with Drupal is that when you go off and make an uh, implementation of a distribution, it's very easy to go off on your own side. So the DrupalCon sites right now use their own version of COD split off from a very early version of COD 7. Um, so a lot of the features that are in here now are not in there. And actually, uh, Emily and I just joined the Drupal Association, and one of the uh, key things about that is actually getting COD um, and the, the the Drupal Association and DrupalCons back in alignment. And so when it's back in alignment, um, you'll see those features that are in the base distribution come up to all the DrupalCons. So um, that should hopefully help on that spot. But I'd love um, to, I'm trying to think speakers, I don't think we provide a feed for yet. Um, so it'd be awesome to get you know more of those feeds in there. So yeah, hopefully that helps. Okay, thanks. Yep. Uh, first of all, Thank you. It's a really, really cool distribution, and uh, we also used it in 2014 with the Drupal Jam. And there we noticed one thing, that if sponsors sign up, they have to, for Dutch legality, they have to really sign and then upload a PDF. So we had to hack some fields in the sign-up process. So that could be a giveaway for uh, future development. And also with OHM in mind, they had a great Badger Badger system where you got a black hat and everybody was a volunteer. And I think it would be a great opportunity to uh, include organizing all the volunteers in the COD process. Uh, and the question about that is, is this on uh, the future plans or? Uh, so specifically about, uh, sorry, um, your question about volunteers yeah. and uh, how they're being shown on the site, is that what you're talking about? No, not, not really shown on the side, more on, on a managerial scale that you have a, a bunch of people who sign up and another bunch of people who not necessarily have to be the same who show up. Uh, ah. So in order to plan and uh, chase your volunteers <laughs> and keep the community manager's job easy, it would be nice just to... Right, so that actually is something where we have internal... Um, discussion about at Linux Fest because people show up because yeah. it's a free event and we don't have caps. Mm -hmm. um, that is something we're looking at this year. Right now, we sort of require everyone to register, but we you don't have to register at 9 a.m. You can register whenever you want. Um, it would be cool to be able to facilitate or make that process faster. Um, and, and so one of the things we did like the first few years, we had a very long registration form, and this year it's like first name, last name, boom. That's it. So if you register, you can, on the site, you can get more data if you want. But if you're there, like, when you times 20 seconds by, like, 600 people, it's like, <laughs> it goes long. So hopefully that helps. Um, I would love to figure out better ways to make it easier for people on site because that, that is certainly a thing we deal with. And where do you have anything? Uh, so did that answer the question about volunteer? Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. Hi. Um, I'm just wondering if it is uh, possible uh, how hard it would be to change the uh, acceptance process uh, to, to code something like a multi-level approach. Uh, uh, would it be easy, do you think? or? Um, what do you mean by multi-level approach? Um, I mean um, there is some uh, master referees about uh, session acceptance, and they just give the papers or the sessions to minor referees, uh, and they really evaluate them, and then it gets back to the quality assurance and stuff ah, like this. That, I think, would be – that's – one of the nice things with COD, since we used a lot of Drupal standards, uh, session submissions are simply nodes. So that would be really easy for any conference to implement using the workflow um, or the workbench moderation module. You use workbench. Um, so COD doesn't use workbench out of the box, but because we do have standard nodes for session submissions, um, it's easy for anyone to customize as they see fit. So Workbench Moderation would easily handle that. But it, we don't have any plans at this point to add it Workbench Moderation into COD cool. because it's it's a solution that doesn't apply to all conferences. Okay. 
And uh, one other question. Um, a session uh, consists of only one uh, paper or something, or is there a possibility um, that the session is, uh, consists of three or four? So yesterday, we actually had someone sprinting. Um, we had an issue with the slides. Like right now, it's like an upload widget, and it's, uh, it's a singular upload widget. Um, and we had someone say, we want to put in slide share and, and perform other types of media. And so with my work uh, on Drupal Commons, um, we're, we've made the Commons Media module. And since both Commons and COD uh, use uh, organic groups as a, as a baseline to manage events or groups for Commons, uh, my hope is to actually get that part into COD and then uh, get rid of the slide field and change it into the media field. Um, that should make it a lot easier to do to do that type of work. Okay, okay but, but that would mean um, there's still one session and there's got multi um, slides, but it's not, uh, you can submit one slide and one slide and one slide and the uh, conference organizer says, oh, they fit together, we put them in one session. Oh. Oh, you're talking about like taking multiple session submissions, yeah, and then and then combining them into put one. Them together, yeah. Uh, so far with Linux Fest, we've just asked people if they wanted to combine their session together, and then they pick whichever one's most closely related and covers, and then they just add a speaker to that session. It would be an interesting idea, though, to create a related. I, there's a related module which is horrible because um, uh, the the search query like totally, it gets really really bad, but. Um, like it, it goes nuts. But uh, that would be an interesting idea to add related sessions or, or have admins be able to say this is a related session. That might be something worth thinking about, actually. The other thing to think about with that is because the scheduler is now far more flexible, uh, you would have the ability to add multiple sessions to a room and combine them that way. So um, in that manner, you could have single sessions in, you know, next door in that room, and then in this room, you could plan to have multiple sessions. So you could do it that way as well. Okay, cool. thank you. Yeah. Hi. Thanks for this uh, great uh, distribution. Um, I have a question regarding the sponsorship uh, registrations. Um, I don't know if I understand correctly, but I thought I heard it was like taxonomy terms. You could create different sponsorships. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, you also have uh, sessions and rooms. And I was wondering if in the registration process it would be easy to uh, make it possible to sponsor room, a room or a session. So uh, for Linux Fest, we had, we've tried sponsored rooms. Um, and usually what we did was we put it in the title. Like we haven't... Uh, put it in. But since rooms are entities, we could essentially just add a uh, sponsor uh, relation field, which would be a fun feature to add uh, for that. Okay. Um, as far as taxonomy goes, the old versions of COD had it hard-coded. Um, the new version of COD, uh, while we support multiple events, um, the, the uh, sponsorship levels are global to the site. So um, while you may have like four or five different levels, um, you may only use three in one session uh, or one event, but you may use all five in the next event or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Cool. Any other? I Yeah, go for it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm Patrick. I work for the European Commission. And we have one use case I fear is not covered here, but please tell me I'm wrong. Uh, we organize different conferences totally unrelated at different times. Mm -hmm. So I, I think here you organize with one site, one big event with different sessions and so on. Uh, so actually COD supports multiple events and you can do, um, we've had one site that's meant to run 100 events in a year and it all runs off of the single code base. And it's not multi-site. Yeah. That, that's a new feature. Um, Since? Is it recent? Uh, yeah, uh, okay. since Alpha 3, I think, was when... Yeah, so so basically we move... COD historically was uh, one site for one camp for one year. And we've moved it to be... Uh, for Linux Fest, we do annual events, but we didn't want to spin up new sites every year. So, uh, so in COD now, you have the ability to add a new event for every single year. Um, but 
you might want to talk about the Mongo. Um, um, so yeah. MongoDB runs a um, hundred or so events every year, and one of the ability to just have an event site where you have multiple events all located in this one site, and they can each have their own theme, they can each have their own system. So a lot of the work was done for that. Okay, I'll go back home with good news. <laughs> Thank you. <Yes. laughs> yeah. There, uh, Richie. Um, we're based in uh, Zurich, Switzerland. Uh, we we have uh, increasing inquiries about, from companies which uh, like to have kind of end-to-end -end process uh, for the whole events they actually perform. So my question is, uh, as I see here now on, on, on the code, is uh, you handle all the administration stuff, here, which is registration and and, and, and sessioning, and booking. Uh, what about what, what's happening actually uh, during the event? You know kind of one-to-one -one bookings, you know, of, of people may, may want to speak with certain people, or uh, voting, polling, surveys, and that kind of things, oh. which actually, uh, w w we just have a, quite a demand on that because they don't want to come and say, okay, we want to use a common management system for this, you know. We, we would like to have one piece together, you know, to end, actually end, to, end, to have an end-to-end -end process on in one application to do this. Do you have any plans on this? Is there any roadmap on that? So one thing that's awesome about Drupal uh, that I forgot to mention was that because it's not in COD, but for Linux Fest, we use WebForm to do our session uh, or our uh, event evaluations. Um, it's a little more tailored to what we're doing, but it would be really awesome to get that as a feature um, for, for the submissions. Um, I haven't heard about the one-to-one -one contacts um, one thing with the, the PDF scanner, um, it's a V-card. So when you scan someone's badge, it takes you to the V-card that we put output from uh, the database from, from yeah. the site. Yeah, but, but um, that, that, that's what we're looking at. Oh. What are uh, people are asking, uh, is there a possibility to network within the event? Oh. Without, there is. Without displaying uh, the, 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 all the personal addresses, you know. If they feel comfortable, they will open up their account with all their, with their personal uh, uh, addresses or whatever, you know. But uh, just the possibility to network in the end to end before, you know, just without being uh, disclosing your, your details. Yeah, there is some basic abilities to do that simply because, again, we built COD with Drupal standards. So, two of the things that would enable that one is that there is an attendees view. So, if you're registered, you can, if you know, you as a site administrator set the permissions, you can allow people to see the other people, the other attendees. Uh, when they see the other attendees, they can click on that user profile because when you register a ticket, it creates a user account for you. Uh, so when you have that user account, Drupal by default has the contact module, and the contact module doesn't expose your information, but it does provide a form that someone can fill out to contact you. So combining those two um, pieces of Drupal that come out of the box with COD, uh, you could easily... Uh, just configure those to have some some basic networking. Okay, thanks. Cool. Yeah. Any other? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks again for beautiful work. Um, Thank you. I was wondering, would it be possible to have people not only register for the event as a whole, but also for the sessions with within the event? Hmm. So, um, so we actually have a flag on every session so that people can say, I'm attending this, mm -hmm. and that adds it to their schedule, and it also essentially is a kind of registration so you can see who's attending, and you can have a block that shows who's attending that session. Okay. Uh, but that is, is, is that, that like optional, or is it like when you register, you get immediately the option to say, so what sessions are you going to be visiting? Well, right now, right now it's in the schedule. So you can click, um, similar to how DrupalCon has the ability to add things to your schedule. Mm -hmm. um, the registrations, not yet. I'm just like pondering. Yeah, it, it, it wouldn't be trivial um, to put during registration. Um, it would, but you're not the first one actually to ask about that. We had uh, an issue in the queue. Um, someone's wondering about registration per um, uh, per item, and. It's an interesting one because some people have talked about actually using this as a um, classroom management system as well um, to, to do different classes. Um, and then people, when they register, they can register for those classes. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't worked on that, um, but love to see patches. Um, and uh, 
but yeah, the the ability. Uh, there was another thing about um, the flags. We have uh, add to my schedule, and then we have I'm interested in attending this session. And the way we sort of do this now is the I'm interested gives us a count for our rooms, and it's about seventy to eighty percent accurate. So the ones that are fuller, we're pretty good on on the room size. Um, but th those are probably the, the the best ways to create that information. So, okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah. And the cool thing about flag is that it exposes the view, so you can even make lists of right. people mm -hmm. attending. Yeah. So, so the question, is, yes, you can make a uh, flag uh, is exposed to views. And I believe, I don't know if it's in COD. I know we have one for Linux Fest, but basically, when we go to schedule our our rooms, we have the listing um, ranked by which one has the highest number. So when we go to accept our sessions. Um, they're all in the accepted tab because we uh, to use a five star or give it some five star rating, and then uh, there's another view where we can basically order them by how many people have voted, and then we can uh, drag them into the, the scheduler that way. Um, this year was a little more manual, um, but with all the work uh, done in the last uh, five months, it's pretty. Um, a lot of this is now all done within. Uh, the site, and you don't need to like use Google spreadsheets and things. It's sort of one of the things we're trying to eliminate is the need for extra spreadsheets to manage the data we already have on the site. So, any other questions? Cool. Well, hopefully this was uh, a good update and informative. And um, yeah, if you have any other questions you want to ask, we'll be up here for a little bit. So, thanks very much.